Uh, we believed from very early on, if you get one customer, serve them very well. Mm -hmm. um, and then they'll lead you to the next and the next and the next. Interesting. From the onset, there's one thing we've been really good at, mm -hmm. tap and pay. We just, you just don't see it. You know, like entrepreneurs, you get so lost. Mm -hmm. And always it's a tragedy of us guys when we are very young mm -hmm. and you're very young entrepreneurs, you're hot. Yeah. You want to try everything. You hear Bitcoin, mm -hmm. you want to try Bitcoin. Yeah. What item is worth spending more money on? Travel. Uh, what's the one thing that you regret spending money on? Friends who didn't matter, yeah. Good evening and welcome to The Late Night Business. My name is Ian Dennis and tonight we have a very interesting show lined up because we're going to be talking matters tech. What's the future of tech? How's the business of tech? And through my guest, we're going to be having all this particular reflection through his journey. But before I get to introduce my guest, I'd like to let you know we are here at the Capital Club, the place you need to be. And the interesting thing about being a member of the Capital Club is that whenever, whatever country you fly to, travel to, you can have access to the various clubs. Is it Dubai? Is it London? Is it New York? Whatever it is. As you say, through the Capital Club, as an entrepreneur, you get to build your network. The guest I'm speaking about is the founder of Terra, an interesting business that's in the wallet as a service business. Collins Miruki, the CEO. Thank you so much for coming to the show. Thank nice you to for, see you. Thank you for having me. You're making me yeah. feel like I'm just so much. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting with tech people, it's always very simple. <laughs> Meeting with up on a suspender and everything. Yeah, you know, even when I left home, I was thinking, uh -huh. do I wear something official? I was uh -huh. like, no, I wear like this every day. Yeah, you, you just know, have like, to be yourself. You just show up in jeans and, and a shirt. And, it's, yeah. it's a double thing. And for me, yeah. it's always yeah, suspenders <laughs> and everything. But nice to see you. Thank you for having me. The first question I like starting all my guests in any particular show is that what exactly are you most grateful for today? Ah, oh, family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it could be love and family um, because um, like in all aspects of my life, when mm -hmm. you look at it, mm -hmm. family has always been there. Mm -hmm. One or another. Doesn't mean it's someone you know you're related to, like blood related. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be friends that became family mm -hmm. and you know they've been there for you. Yeah. Ah, that's very yeah. interesting. Um, just to paint a picture uh, onto your background, maybe you can just take us through your journey from the, the onset, where did you grow up, how was your upbringing? I like uh, just asking this question, not as a cliche, but just trying to paint <laughs> a picture of where the journey came from. Yeah, so uh, I was born in 1990. Um, Fun fact, I was born in the same hospital with my wife. Ah, uh, yeah. interesting. And you yeah. guys didn't know? Nazareth Hospital, uh -huh. Kiambu. Uh -huh. Um, this was 1990. Um, I grew up uh, in Kakuzi. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad used to work in Kakuzi. 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 Yeah. On your way, think around towards yeah, Kenol, yeah. you know, going to yeah, Sagana, Kakuzi. Yeah, yeah. So so I, yeah, we grew up in the bush and forest. That's what I used to say because, you know, there was trees everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, grew up with my two brothers, mm -hmm. um, uh, Derek and uh, Ken. So mm -hmm. I'm the last born. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we are three of us. Uh -huh. Today um, seems I'm meeting so many last bones. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing a lot of interviews with last bones. <laughs> it's, it's our time now. I think it's our time for last bones. The last now. shall become first. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, that was it. I mean, I always say, like, my, my education, all of it was along the road. Because uh -huh. I, I, I went to primary school at Moy Academy. Uh -huh. um, that's a public primary school in Thika. Because uh -huh. that was closer to Kakuzi. Um, yeah. Then uh, went to university, mm -hmm. no, I went to high school, in Mango High School. Mm -hmm. um, oh no, yeah, even before that I went to Moranga. Mm -hmm. I was taken to boarding because I was very naughty. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we went to boarding. But at the same time also my dad uh, got retrenched from mm -hmm. Kakuzi. Uh, there yeah. was a retrenchment that was happening. Ah. So it was, it was a really bad time. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, you, you can tell your parents are going through something, yeah. but you know, they're not telling you because you're too young. Mm -hmm. But you could realize, like, your diet may change, you mm -hmm. know. Oh. You know, we used yeah. to have fruits every day, now yeah. you're having it hey, twice or three times. It is no longer fruitful. <laughs> oh, God. But, yeah, so, that, so we, we noticed a shift. Um, and the thing, like, I credited my dad most for is that he had started building in Fome. Mm -hmm. uh, even when we were living in Gakuzi. So mm -hmm. he built a house, and mm -hmm. I think we were renting it. At some, it was being rented at some time. Mm -hmm. At some point, um, so when he got retrenched, mm -hmm. us guys, we left. You know the nice life mm -hmm. of being under, you know, a big corporate. Yeah. Um, we came to start living in Nairobi now, oh. uh, in the same house Dad had bought. Uh, but now then some of those luxuries you're used to when you're young mm -hmm. had gone. Um, uh, yeah. So that's the time I went to boarding mm -hmm. in Moranga, mm -hmm. up, uh, Saint Paul Thomas Academy, mm -hmm. um, founded by 
Munga of Equity. Mm. Um, oh, the yeah. chairman. Yeah, the chairman. Yeah, yeah, he founded the school. Mm -hmm. So I remember I was very excited to go to that school mm -hmm. initially because um, it had a fish pond. How are you excited about I don't the fish? Know, man. I, it's not like I'm <laughs> swimming in that uh -huh. thing. But you know the way you go to school and then yeah. they take you around and they're mm -hmm. like, yo, here's a dining hall. Yeah. Here's a fish pond. I was like, man, mm -hmm. we don't have a fish pond in this other school. Yeah. I want to be here. But, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I thought we'd fish or something. Um, so, yeah, we went to that school. Um, and I remember the first week I, I discovered something called you know, homesickness. Mm -hmm. Oh, because you're not, it was your first experience it was in boarding. my first boarding. I was yeah. boarding when I was in class six. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was pretty young. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's, yeah, that's pretty young. I was pretty young. young. And yeah. my, my bro was in, you know, a class ahead, mm -hmm. Derek. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, we, we, we'd cry every night, you know, yeah. oh, we want to talk to dad, yeah. we want to talk to dad. And we wrote letters that probably we never got home because uh -huh. we're just, you know, trashing the schools mm -hmm. so that yeah. we go home. Um, so we learned very early on to be by ourselves. Um, that's what I, I picked from that. So we, we learned how to do your own clothes, for example, mm -hmm. polish your own shoes, mm -hmm. you know, those two small oh, yeah. things. And, and, you know, figuring out independence at a very, you know, young age. Um, my bro left, of course, mm -hmm. um, so I was in the school alone for, I think, a year or so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that was my pub, you know, primary school. Um, Interesting. And you mentioned that you also found your way to Mango, and I know guys also from Mango. Yeah. And Alliance, same WhatsApp <laughs> group. I was in Mango. No, Ma Mango guys are a bit more modest. Uh, <laughs> We let our work speak for itself, uh -huh. but you know that. How was the experience lads. there? Because it was a Mangu, it's a national school. It's a national yeah, school. So um, yeah, very I was very person. surprised actually I made it to Mangu. Uh -huh. uh, because um, I was a joker, man. I used to play. I, you know, I was, I was the kind of kid, you know, who'd mm -hmm. be given an assignment. Mm -hmm. um, and then I wouldn't take it home. Mm -hmm. And then I'd say, and then I go to school, and then I go to school, and then I go to school. So I used to play those games. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then my mom would come to school and whip me, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> whip me so much, yeah, yeah. because I didn't like studying. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't like the structure of school. Mm -hmm. That's what I noticed um, mm -hmm. very early on. So I was surprised I made it to Mango. Mm -hmm. I passed my KCP, mm -hmm. um, joined Mango, found mm -hmm. my our first boy who was in Form 4. Yeah. Uh, when I was in uh, Form 1 in Mango. Uh -huh. Also, so, so your brother made it to yeah, Mango. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. the, the, the eldest brother yeah. who I didn't go to primary school with went yeah. to Mango. Uh -huh. Um, so I found him, you know, as in Form 4, as in Form 1, so mm -hmm. I felt protected, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Mangu again had similar characteristics to, you know, like the primary school I was in. Mm -hmm. Mangu was more of a... Teachers didn't interfere much mm -hmm. with, you know, with, with how you ran your day to day. Yeah. So they'd come to class, go and trust that you're mature enough or to you know what your you're decisions. doing here. You know, you're here to study, you yeah. know, and you'll follow up with you. Uh -huh. um, so... I found that in Mangu it was pretty easy for me to, to, to join in. Mm -hmm. um, I did my high school that I passed um, and I went to Jomo Kenyatta University. Interesting. So you're a sharp um, student despite being naughty and all. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, my mom <laughs> yeah. would tell me that, you know, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> I was so naughty, but yeah. you know, if, if I just studied for like a few days and yeah. take an exam, I'd pass. Mm -hmm. um, so she always used to see the potential, but she was yeah. like, this guy doesn't want to study. I yeah. doesn't want to read. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. And something you'd also mentioned that your dad used to work at Kakuzi for a yeah, while and then yeah. got retrenched. Um, and primarily, in your recollection, that that was when he jumped into business or what exactly really yeah. transpired during that particular Yeah, place? yeah. Interesting story is that um, dad always used to, he planned for his retirement. Mm -hmm. So even when he was in Kakuzi, he was, you know, well paid, yeah. we were comfortable, but he'd invest in a couple of things. So he'd get my mom a hardware, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. he went to Thika, start buying to lands, mm -hmm. started doing like a hardware business. Yeah while still, you know, working in Kakuzi. Oh, uh -huh. So when we got retrenched, dad said, you know, I'm going to go, you know, to be a Shara full time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember him telling me the first thing he wanted to do was, you know, do feeds, mm -hmm. manufacture feeds. Yeah. You know, feeds for like for cows mm -hmm. or whatnot. And he got conned. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> so he lost money. So yeah. the, the, the building he was going to get, you know, his warehouse to mm -hmm. do the manufacturing, mm -hmm. he paid and something went bad in the deal and mm -hmm. he lost money. So mm -hmm. he, you know, I think he lost hope in that, mm -hmm. that business. Mm -hmm. And he started the hardware. Mm. Um, and that's what's kept us like through high school. Like, awesome. in, yeah. Interesting. And yeah. primarily just from observing your dad and from, I, from what exactly I'm listening from you, like dad used to talk to you guys and what exactly his plans were. What are some of the lessons you can say you, your dad instilled in you as you're growing up? What exactly are some of the lessons that you captured uh -huh. through these faces? It's very interesting because yeah. like... I can think of like two of them. Mm -hmm. uh, one was make hay. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. You know, because of what happened to him in Kakuzi, yeah. Dad always told you, you know, if things are good, mm -hmm. make hay while mm -hmm. the sun is shining. Yeah. So when you see things happening, you know, going for you, mm -hmm. um, prepare because there's going to be a dark season yeah. coming. Mm -hmm. So it's not always going up, there are mm -hmm. downhills. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's how we lived most of us, you know, when things are good, we'd, we'd know, okay, Make let's it. prepare because mm. invest or do something mm. because, you know, when the bad season comes, you're mm. ready. Mm -hmm. um, number two was, you know, living well with people. My, my dad, my dad lived well with people, mm -hmm. still does. Yeah. Um, dad would always show up. Mm -hmm. Any event, you know, those, you know, those traditional events. Yeah. I don't know a neighbor's cousin is getting married, yeah. dad is invited. <laughs> He'd rather go alone. But The neighbor's up. cow is giving yeah. birth. <laughs> <laughs> Something about our parents and our generation. Dad always yeah. showed up, uh -huh. and 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 till today, like some of the benefits I, you know, I I see like from friends and mm -hmm. old friends of dad, mm -hmm. is because of what dad did to them. Mm -hmm. um, dad dad elevated a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, when he, he had the power yeah. to. It's something about the generation of our dads. It's very yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and you know, if I was giving the story of my dad, my mm -hmm. dad uh, born and raised in Meru. Uh -huh. uh, my 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 grandfather, mm -hmm. my the, my late grandfather used to sell tobacco. Mm -hmm. Uh, we used to call it Mbake, mm. you know. And my mom used to, uh, my grandmother used to make um, uji, yeah. you know, that traditional meru yeah. porridge, uh -huh. and she also used to, to do muratina mm -hmm. at some point. Oh. So you can imagine how that, you know, the homestead was. Mm -hmm. They were very poor. Mm -hmm. uh, they were so poor, in fact, that my mom was telling me that when she went to, you know, they were dating with my dad. Yeah. Back in Meru, you know, uh -huh. and she went to visit my dad's side of the family, yeah. she almost cried. Uh -huh. Cause my mom came from a nice house, you know, yeah. homestead. And then uh, you come to problems. And you go and see problems. She's like, hey, because okay. of these guys, you know, a pot of gideri will be cooked. Yeah. And then, because there were eight kids, uh -huh. uh, my dad was a second born. Mm -hmm. So they'd eat the last ones, you know, they'd give oh. first of all food to the young ones. Uh -huh. Wakishiba, the plate moves. Oh. All the way to, to kill so my dad. Object poverty. My dad lived in poverty. Uh -huh. um, and, and from very early on, they mm -hmm. were really determined to get out of it. Mm -hmm. um, so when my dad's eldest brother, the firstborn of mm -hmm. their family, yeah. uh, who I'm named after, uh -huh. um, left Meru. He uh -huh. came here, he got a job in Nairobi, mm -hmm. he pulled my dad. Uh -huh. So that's what they used to do. Then my dad came here, found a job in, I don't know, a CMC or something, yeah. pulled you know, the next else. one. That's what they did until eight, all the eight kids came to the oh, Nairobi. That's very interesting. <laughs> From a property, everybody trying to pull themselves. Yeah, and you know, you'd come. So yeah. I remember when I was young, you know, seeing you living with your aunties everywhere. Yeah. And for me, it was fun because mm -hmm. there yeah, are around, but mm -hmm. you know, auntie was around for a very long time. Yeah. Kumbe, my dad, was probably paying for the education uh, for like uh, four years. That's interesting. So they, you know, they come, you know, they, they, they pull they everybody live, out. Yeah, that's, out that's very interesting from the yeah. other generation. Yeah. And then you got yourself into computer science and you got yourself yeah. into the world of tech. What did the interest of tech come about or um, how, did, how did that come about? Tech came through my bro, mm -hmm. Derek. Mm -hmm. You know, the one we were with. Yes, you know, in in Prairie, Mango, yeah. yes, in So Derek went to Njiri's high school. Mm -hmm. um, so he used Jiri to come in Njiri. Embu. Jiri is in Moranga Moranga, yeah, 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 Moranga, yeah. So Derek from very early on, mm -hmm. you know, understood computers. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember when he was small, dad bought a computer and Derek knew stuff about the, the computer. The Pentiums. Yeah, the Pentiums. Yeah. Yeah. those big ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd watch it and then like... <laughs> and then the, the big yeah. monitor that looks yeah. like this. Yeah, uh -huh. never forget it. Uh, uh -huh. So when we left Kakuzi, uh -huh. you know, dad bought one of those computers he used to use yeah. uh, from the company and uh -huh. came with it. Mm -hmm. So we used to have a small computer at home, yeah. um, but we didn't know much about it. Mm -hmm. In fact, even connecting the cables, yeah. you know, the other ones would do it. Mm -hmm. um, so Derek used to know stuff about computers. Mm -hmm. He went to Njiri's, come mm -hmm. back, and mm -hmm. you know, he's come with mm -hmm. CDs. You remember mm -hmm. those CDs? Yeah. Like, yeah, he understands CDs. Uh -huh. He comes with a new mouse. Mm -hmm. And me, I was learning so much from him. So that's where yeah. the interest came, yeah. uh -huh. uh, came from. Mm -hmm. um, so when I finished like Mangu, mm -hmm. um, I first of all didn't go to Jayco to do yeah. computer science. Uh -huh. I went to Strathmore. Ah, oh. uh, what did you go to study? ACCA, accounting. Oh, same WhatsApp group. Yeah, because uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. in Strathmore trying to do accounting. Uh -huh. And I felt it's because dad did procurement, so he uh -huh. wanted me to be in an accounting uh -huh. procurement line. Uh -huh. So I did Strathmore and did it for like one year. I was like, this uh -huh. is not my thing. Uh -huh. You know, I can't be doing debits mm -hmm. and credits every mm -hmm. day. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't love it. Uh -huh. um, so I told dad, hey, I don't think I love this thing. Um, I want to do computer. Uh -huh. And that's why I went to JQuart. Mm -hmm. um, and I did computer, computer science in JQuart. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, primarily, how was the experience? Because you know, there's something you may desire this, and then this you get into computer science, and then it's the whole. Yeah. yeah. For me, JQuart was a different experience uh -huh. um, because, first of all, the university was different. Mm -hmm. uh, the life in uni was different. We mm -hmm. had so much time. Mm -hmm. Um, I always say like a lot of the things I learned in tech were not mm -hmm. learned in class. Mm -hmm. So class was just read and pass. Mm -hmm. uh, but I loved, that's the time we had laptops mm -hmm. and you know, online was you know, blowing up. Mm -hmm. Everyone had a 
5G Air, you know, was it an Airtel or Orange SIM card? That yeah. kind of thing. Kadongo, oh, yeah, yeah. The Google, Google for yeah. whatever, for yeah. the Wi Fi. Yeah. yeah. So uh, when I got to like first year, uh, I learned basics. Mm -hmm. uh, second year, I was like, okay, we have so much time. Mm -hmm. I need to figure out how to make extra money. Because mm -hmm. my dad was frugal. Mm -hmm. Ah, <laughs> uh huh. My dad was so frugal. Uh -huh. um, you know, I think we'd get like 500 bob, was it a thousand bob a week? Uh -huh. And you have to survive like in uni. That includes transport and everything. Ah, both, everything. Yeah. There was uh -huh. no transport in Georgia. Uh -huh. you, 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 oh, you walk. You have to bicycles or you walk. Yeah. You know, you plant a bicycle. Uh -huh. um, so, dad was very frugal. And I think it was his way of showing yeah. us how yeah. to yeah. figure out things. Uh -huh. You don't have to wait for me to give you money to mm -hmm. do stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so daddy used to give us money. So mm -hmm. if you needed to take someone out during mm -hmm. the weekend, you have to figure it out how mm -hmm. you're gonna make money. Mm -hmm. That's how I went and found that job. Mm -hmm. It was my internship for second year. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones that you're told to do internal mm -hmm. attachment, I think, yeah. inside school. Uh -huh. So that's why I went and found a job because mm -hmm. we had a lot of free time. Uh -huh. um, and I said, I'll work In on this year, job. year, first year? Second year. Second year, uh-huh. Yeah, I became an intern. Uh -huh at uh, Novel Technologies mm -hmm. and uh, I met a very, very good boss mm -hmm. called Gitonga. Mm -hmm. We're still friends till today and yeah. I always say like, um, I've learned so much, you know, um, from him. You mm -hmm. know, his business acumen is, mm -hmm. is really good. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I worked there for like three, four months. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then uh, came back to school. Mm -hmm. And then there's another internship that happens, mm -hmm. I think, in third year. Mm -hmm. I went back, they called me back. They're mm -hmm. like, yeah, Collins, we know you. Yeah. We love your work, come and work with mm -hmm. us. Now, the second internship uh, mm -hmm. that I went into, mm -hmm. um, I didn't want my parents to know I'm getting paid. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> right? Because uh -huh. if dad knew I'm getting money. That's at the end of 500. Yeah, hey, that would have gone. If dad knew I'm getting yeah. money, that uh -huh. would have gone. Uh -huh. So I remember I, I came to Nairobi. Um, I wasn't very familiar with the city. Um, mm -hmm. And my, my cousin called Bernice used mm -hmm. to stay in University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. so I don't know that. This is this Wanuku Uthiru somewhere. Uh -huh. There's that campus there somewhere. Yeah. And she's, she's a chick, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I used to go and sleep, you know, in the same room with her, like mm -hmm. in the dormitories, mm -hmm. you know, those schools, because yeah. I didn't have accommodation. I have to be uh, in Westlands every morning yeah. by eight to uh -huh. work uh -huh. and then go back. So you used to go to. So my dad thought I'm in Juja all mm -hmm. this time. Mm -hmm. Uh, but me, I was not in Juja uh -huh. doing attachment. Yeah. Me, I was in Westlands working. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I did that for about four months. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, now, interestingly, is that I was living in a, in a, in a girl's hostel uh -huh. for three months. How did they allow you? No, it was easy. You know, they, you can go in. You can oh, visit your girlfriend yeah. inside. Uh -huh. But now, see, quickie fika, you know, yeah. she'd, she'd, she'd slide a mattress from beneath her bed uh -huh. and sleep next to her. Uh -huh. Very interesting story. Now uh -huh. I used to wake up so early, uh -huh. like by six when I shower. Uh -huh. Women, the girls don't oh, find yeah, me in the yeah, shower yeah. rooms, uh -huh. you know, because I'm sleeping in a girl's yeah. hostel. Hey. So I did that for three months, bro. Uh -huh. um, and then the school's closed. Now uh -huh. she has to go back home as yeah. well. So you don't so have an like, accommodation? Ah. So I talked to another auntie of mine yeah. who was in South B. Mm -hmm. You know, she was those hip aunties. I was like, yo, this is the situation. Uh -huh. I don't want my parents to know I'm working. Uh -huh. Um, I want. I was still want to work because uh -huh. they're paying me well. Uh -huh. uh, let me let me stay at your place for for yeah. a couple of weeks, uh -huh. and then the internship, you know, ends. Uh -huh. So I went to South B. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> worked there for about two weeks. On the uh -huh. third week, I lost my laptop. Uh -huh. Maybe your laptop. What? Uh, downtown. Can I talk about the stage of Kochini? What's that stage called? Which one? That was South B. Then Mat Matatu's oh, terminator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. Get you. Afia Center. Afia Center. Yeah, yeah. You know, someone came and you know they told me, oh, yeah. so you have lost what? Can yeah. you help me? Yeah. yeah. Show me where yeah. Airtel shops are uh -huh. on Koinange Street. Yeah. And they had a car, by uh -huh. the way. And I popped yeah. in the car. Yeah. Kind of all the way back at Koinange Street. Uh -huh. And then they were like, hey, Collins, uh -huh. so me, I left my laptop, left the car, went and told the soldier, turning, the car uh -huh. is gone. Uh -huh. My laptop, Everything the one dead. dad bought for me, yeah. is gone. Sheesh. Now I'm like, how am I going to tell dad? Uh -huh. I lost my laptop in uh -huh. town, doing what? Uh -huh. Dad knows I'm in Juja. Yeah. Oh, so that, <laughs> you have to oh, sort yourself. I was so stressed, yeah. um, and the interesting thing is that I went to work, I told yeah. my boss, yeah. uh, I lost my laptop, uh -huh. uh, he bought me a new one. Uh -huh. So my dad thought, me, I figured it out and upgraded myself and yeah. got a new laptop. Uh -huh. uh, he didn't know the whole story. Yeah. That was for me, that, that, that's how I worked like through oh. uh, uni. Through, now, yeah. now Terra, Terra yeah. started when I was in third year uh -huh. of campus. What exactly? How do you, what opportunity did you see? How did it come about? Yeah, so my partner, my business partner is called Martin. Uh -huh. uh, Martin was, he was friends with some other guys who were running an NGO mm -hmm. in Kibera. Mm -hmm. The NGO then was called Umande. Mm -hmm. um, so Martin comes one day mm -hmm. and we hadn't even started a company. Me and Martin were in the same class. Mm -hmm. So computer technology, we'd mm -hmm. sit together. He was a really good programmer. Mm -hmm. um, so of course, you'd sit to him, next to him because me, I didn't know how to code anything. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, Martin comes, uh, says he calls these guys in Kibera who yeah. want an access control system for mm -hmm. toilets. Mm -hmm. So the NGO used to build sanitation centers. Mm -hmm. Think of what Shofku is doing, you yeah. know, building toilets oh, yeah, yeah. and bathrooms. The... And now they wanted a quick way to collect mm -hmm. uh, Payment. payments. Uh -huh. That's all these things for wristbands and tapping. That's where it started. Ah, oh. uh, back in 20... 2010. That's a long time. You're long ahead time. of your time. I was so ahead. Uh -huh. 2010 it started. Um, so he's like, yeah, can we build something around it? Martin was like, yeah, Martin was a good programmer. Uh -huh. And a guy called Alex, I yeah. remembered. So I told him, you guys figure out the business. Mm -hmm. Me, I'll do the soft business. Mm -hmm. Me, I'll do the invoices. Yeah. I'll make the company look nice. Uh -huh. And we'll sell, okay? Uh -huh. Sour. So they went and coded something. And then we put in sensors at the door uh -huh. to count how many people are going in and out of the oh. toilet. That is in 2010? 2010. 2010. You guys have started yeah. using even machine learning. Yeah, we were doing them in 2010. Um, oh. I, I didn't know what was happening. Me, uh -huh. I just knew. I just knew like when you cross, it counts. Yeah, yeah. That's all me and you. Uh -huh. um, so Martin and Alex built the whole system, uh -huh. and then we invoiced, mm -hmm. and we charged. I remember 150,000 shillings. Uh -huh. That was like 100 million for us, yeah. then, man. You know, you oh, can both imagine. of you guys were in campus. Yeah, we were in uni. You know, in third year, yeah. 150k, uh -huh. and they negotiated. They said, "Oh, we'll only pay you 80,000." We were like, "We are fine." Yeah. With the 80,000, just mm -hmm. pay us. Uh -huh. And you know, they paid us and we, we, we developed a system. It yeah. wasn't as good, it was really bad. Yeah. Um, you had, we hadn't learned how to build. So the system primarily was the system of counting people and Counting, yeah, and, and tapping. So uh -huh. we'd, we'd give them like smart cards uh -huh. and then uh, every family will get a card. Uh -huh. That will be, you could load money into the card. There was uh -huh. no MPESA integration then. Yeah. So how will they load money? The, an agent. You give someone 50 oh, bob. Oh, then they give they you a card. They tap the card, they load it with 50 bob, uh -huh. right? And then you could tap to access yeah. hot shower. Mm -hmm. So hot shower was 10 shillings, cold shower was 5 shillings, uh -huh. toilet was 5 shillings. Uh -huh. So it's a, somewhere in the door you'd tap, it uh -huh. would open, go in, use the toilet, leave. Uh -huh. That was our fast, fast project. It was, been, was so ahead of your time. Yeah, if you, if you think about it, I always tell people like, I feel like at times we are like the godfathers of, you know, tap and pee. Mm. We started it very early on. Yeah. So the project was being run by Bill and Melinda Foundation. Uh -huh. um, so they came, they were really happy about it. Yeah. And when they came back, like, we started getting more opportunities, mm -hmm. like even consulting, like um, during when Beba was trying the thing mm -hmm. with Google. Yeah, yeah. I remember Beba, yeah. So, Beba by Google, yeah. yeah. So because we were, we were, we were getting paid then mm -hmm. um, in cash, now the, the value started going up. Now from yeah. you're getting paid probably 50K mm -hmm. every month because you're doing an, an additional module, mm -hmm. an additional feature, we had to incorporate. Because mm -hmm. they were like, we can't continue paying you in cash. Yeah. Get a company, mm -hmm. we pay you in check. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, we had never opened a company. Mm -hmm. Those are the days you'd open a company with like 35k. Yeah, they remember. were expensive, yeah. you know, and you had to At get the, someone. What was it called? <laughs> the place near to the AG's office. AG's office, yeah. you know, paperwork, what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah, we go. We went and incorporated Terra. Uh -huh. uh, my partner came up with a name. Uh -huh. It was like Terra. I was like, why Terra? Uh -huh. Terra means Earth. So uh -huh. we are building solutions for Earth. Yeah. Like, okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we registered Terra. Uh, yeah, and, and the company started growing since then. Um, but there wasn't much business, you know, after like... The so you month. started off, it was now your partner, who was the we one... We were three, the, yeah. me, Martin and Alex. Uh -huh. uh, because Martin and Alex were the programmers. Yes. Collins was a business guy. Collins, yeah. during uh -huh. the, you know, the internship, had yes. figured out how to do letters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, how to, 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 to interface with customers, uh -huh. uh, how to sell. Uh, so that was me. Interesting. Um, yeah. And on that particular note, you're going to take a short commercial break. So at least we are the point where about Terra has been formed. And then after the break, you're going to be... So welcome back to the show. Before we went on a break, Collins was just taking us through the journey that led towards Terra being born, or rather being birthed, which is a very interesting, uh, it was a journey of coincidence. So yeah. you guys got the initial contract, uh, what was it called, served it, you had to now register as a company, and then what happened from there? What? Yeah, what happened was I uh, went back to school, so it was it was quiet. Um, oh, so you registered, but you registered when you're still in still university? Still in university, yeah. Uh -huh. And then uh, we just went back to school and then it was quiet. Mm -hmm. Um, and I remember talking to my partner at some point and saying, you know, it was very exciting. I remember the first time, like registering a company was an exciting thing. Yeah. It was an event. Mm -hmm. You know, I could tell everyone I have a company. Mm -hmm. 
but the company is not making any money yeah. you know <laughs> then mm. you realize the the company is not the, the, the thing is that you need to figure out how to make money for mm. the company um, so that you have money in your pocket yeah. um, the money we made for, like the remember the ATK I was telling yes. you about yeah. um, we were given in cash and uh -huh. I, I remember very well we, we boarded like KBS's from Kibera to mm -hmm. town mm -hmm. now we were so afraid because mm -hmm. we have 80,000 shillings yeah. Um, and it was me, Martin, and Alex. And I remember we asked guys splitting the money. Mm. Yeah, you knew you removed it like from your sweaters. Yeah. Like you beba 25, me I'll beba 30. Just in case. Yeah, we put it in socks just in case. If I'm yeah. mugged, yeah. we still have some money left. You know? To split out. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah we, we, we did the splitting. Um, yeah. All the way until we got to Juja. And then we, 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 we came back together in, our, in an apartment. Uh -huh. And then we, we counted it again, yeah. consolidated it. And then we, we had a very good evening, man. I remember. <laughs> Now, what, what did you um, use the money for? Because it is the first. Ah, we partied. Ah, we went out. <laughs> we, th there was nothing else in our minds at that point. Yeah. Like, yo, we've been struggling for uh -huh. so much. Remember uh -huh. the five stock? Yeah. The, you know, there are thousand but you'd get every week. Uh -huh. Now, you see, I even had money even to take that girlfriend in high school, you know. Uh. And, I mean, in, in union, you know, buy her something, you know, a decent meal. Uh -huh. So for us, it was a big thing. Uh -huh. And it, it made us hungry. Mm -hmm. um, because when you experience your fast pay, mm -hmm. you want it to continue, you know, mm -hmm. like over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so after that it was quiet uh, because the NGO closed, mm -hmm. closed down a mm -hmm. uh, couple of months later. It yeah. closed down, I don't know for what reasons. Mm -hmm. So money wasn't coming in, mm -hmm. um, but at least we had one client. Mm -hmm. So when, when anyone would ask me, you know, can you do this? I'm like, yeah, we've done this for Umande Trust. Mm -hmm. And remember my experience from Novel, I mm -hmm. learned that there are things called recommendation letters. I mm -hmm. didn't know. Mm -hmm. So what I went and told these guys before they closed, please yeah. write me a recommendation letter mm -hmm. in your letterhead saying yeah. we did this for you. Mm -hmm. So I only had one recommendation yeah. that I'd used to look, like, look yeah. for more jobs down mm -hmm. the line. So went quiet, finished uni, graduated. Um, Yo, know, fun fact, before even I graduated, mm -hmm. now uh, I started looking for web gigs, website gigs. Yeah. You know, build a website, pay me 30k, pay me 40k. And the first people who supported me were my family. Mm -hmm. um, that's why for me, you ask me what I'm grateful for, it's yeah. family. Uh -huh. um, I used to have an uncle who is li lived in Siokimao. And I remember mm -hmm. I used to go all the way to Siokimao to just show him what I've been doing on a website. Yeah. He'd give me 20K. Yeah. That was the happiest trip back to oh, Yundi. Yeah. You know, I go back, you know, do something else. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they promote me and give me small gigs uh -huh. to do for them because I was the only techie yeah, in, the family. in the family. Everyone else was these other things, but yeah. I was the only techie. So, uh -huh. remote Kiaribika Nyumbani, I'm called. Yeah. Someone's area is not working very well, the uh -huh. TV is not getting signals. <laughs> Signal. Collins, yeah. Collins, yeah. even to, to, to date uh -huh. that, you know, they still mm -hmm. call me. Um, yeah, so graduated from uni, mm -hmm. um, and then now, what next? Now, remember during all this time, yeah. I, I had been working for Novell mm -hmm. for like uh, two years, yeah. you know, like four months each every year. Mm -hmm. And I chose I don't want to be employed. Mm -hmm. It was a very tough thing to do because mm -hmm. my dad was like, we'll find something nice, yeah. go get a job. I was like, oh no. Uh, so I started, you know, every day I leave, I go to some of these hubs, mm -hmm. sit, look for an opportunities, go to my other uncles who might mm -hmm. need websites for their businesses, yeah. do proposals, because those are some of the skills I Good learned lunch. when I was in Novel. Yeah. We used to do a lot of proposals. Mm -hmm. So I knew how they, they write proposals mm -hmm. professionally, look like a big company. Mm -hmm. I set up our first website, mm -hmm. you know, for Terra, so that we look nice. And I started Tamaki, looking mm -hmm. for jobs and opportunities. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the time I met KTD. One of my uncles used to work at KTD. Mm -hmm. uh, and I told him, there's something we did for tap and pay for this NGO. It was yeah. really nice. Mm -hmm. um, and he told me, you know, KTD are thinking of doing something for RFID yeah. to automate warehouses and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And this whole farmer thing, by yeah. the way. Like, Can you do a proposal then, you know, you send it to them and see if they'll pick it up. Mm. That's where we started our journey with KTD. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't work initially. It took so five, what, it what five years. So what was the solution? The solution was first of all to automate the collection of tea. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how, how do you remove the clerk who's there, you know, writing down how many kilos of tea you're bringing yeah. and allowing it to be a digital seamless process, you know, mm -hmm. where a farmer would come with a card, mm -hmm. a tap to identify themselves. Mm -hmm. um, instead of writing somewhere, the farmer will get a text mm -hmm. or a, a receipt printout of the weight mm -hmm. they've brought in. The weight was no longer manual, so it wasn't yeah. someone, you know, tampering with the weight scale, it was yeah. digital. Mm -hmm. So you have a digital weight scale where you put in your tea and mm -hmm. automatically transmits, you know, the weight of the tea to a small gadget. Mm -hmm. And that's a gadget the farmer scans their card uh, on. Interesting. So it was just to remove a lot of fraud. Mm -hmm. um, that was the first phase of what they wanted to do. And then the second phase was to automate um, even payments to these farmers. Interesting. So that was the second big project that you got? Yeah. No, I didn't get it. There's a story behind it. Uh -huh. I didn't get it. Um, so I went and did a proposal um, mm -hmm. and I remember 
we were considered. Mm -hmm. uh, we were very young, man. Yeah. You know, but we were very young. So I went there, I spoke to the group head of ICT, told yeah. them this thing can work. Mm -hmm. um, and remember say, can you guys try it out in a small scale mm -hmm. and see if it's going to work? Mm -hmm. And you know, we went and uh, tried the whole thing, like the whole process from mm -hmm. collecting tea all the way to taking the tea to the warehouses in uh, Miriti in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. And my, my partner Alex then, mm -hmm. you know, had to ride in that your know, lorry mm -hmm. chai from yeah. the from the farm mm -hmm. to the factory, from the factory all the way to Mombasa, uh -huh. to just prove that this system can work end to end. Mm -hmm. It worked well mm -hmm. um, because you know there's a lot of things we we tweaked. The system wasn't so good. Mm -hmm. um, and then we came back to KTD and said, we've proven it, it can mm. work. Mm -hmm. If you just give us the contract, we can do it. Mm. Uh, of course, it went to tendering. Mm. Collins had never done tenders before. Yeah. <laughs> but when I was in uh, Novell Technologies yeah. in, 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 in uh, uni, uh -huh. I'd see how the tendering process, tendering was, process working. was working. Yeah. Um, so I did my initial tender. I think I even borrowed a lot from what I learned there. Mm -hmm. I did the tender, submitted it, it flopped. Mm -hmm. After like two months, tenders are expensive, by mm -hmm. the way. You know, the documentation and everything yeah, yeah. you take. Printing all those bid bond, things. Yeah, you know, yeah. no bank will give you a bid bond because your accounts have mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so submitted the first time failed. Mm -hmm. That tender failed four times mm -hmm. in a span of five years. Yeah. Uh, and we, we actually just got the contract, I think, two years ago, mm -hmm. from way back in what? 2000, yeah, two uh -huh. years ago. Yeah. So, it, it, for me, it was a journey. I learned grit very early uh -huh. on, that you need to grind it. You know, yeah. plant a seed, even if it doesn't sprout, yeah. leave it. Mm -hmm. You know, leave it and you just water it. You just yeah. leave it, it's going to grow. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, th that happened with KTD and then realized, oh, this doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And I realized, Collins, I need to, to, to look a bit professional. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I went to KTD back again and said, hey, uh, this was like tender, tendering the second version of the yeah. tendering and said, hey, we figured out how we can improve the system. We can mm. give an app to every manager mm. who can, you know, for better automation and whatnot. And they're like, okay, fine. Mm. They retendered again. Mm -hmm. Now, this second tender um, was supposed to be pitched. Mm -hmm. um, no, uh, before applying for the tender, you had to pitch to the, to the board, I think, of mm -hmm. Chai Trading, mm -hmm. who were sitting in Mombasa. Yeah. Collins didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, me, I was told that morning. I didn't know. They sent an email. I saw meeting is like on Tuesday at four. I was like, fantastic. Yeah. I didn't read the fine print. It mm -hmm. is in Mombasa. So me, I woke up on a Tuesday morning, yeah. polished my shoes, Vizuri, yeah. Pale Town, you know, ready, to yeah. ready to go. Uh -huh. uh, went and engaged KTDA Plaza, uh -huh. seventh floor, ready for the meeting. They've yeah. been told, boss, yeah. the meeting is in Mombasa. Oh. Oh, crap. Yeah. So I went and called my dad. Yeah. I was like, Dad, I was going for that meeting. Yeah. I've been told it's Mombasa. Please yeah. loan me money. Yeah. I swear I am going to refund it. Yeah. Dad sent me 21K. Uh -huh. I went on to a uh, Fly 540 uh -huh. and my partner. Yeah. That time, my partner is still making fixes to the system yeah. we are going to, pretend, to present. Uh -huh. It's not ready. Uh -huh. it's, it's crashing. It has problems. Yeah. So we went into that car flight. We went to Mombasa. Uh -huh. And then I remember... Going like just fresh after university? Fresh, <laughs> my friend. Like yeah. I got to Mombasa, I was freaking out. Uh -huh. You don't know where you're going to sleep, you've just yeah. landed. Uh -huh. uh, it was my first domestic flight. Uh -huh. I'd never gotten on a flight before. Yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah. So I landed in Mombasa, I went to Miritini, and then we were like, okay, so what next? Mm. Then we, we had been moved because we missed our slot for presentation. We had been moved to the tail end. Yes. So we walked into the whole Michai trading, and yeah. there was like a panel of like 35 board members. Mm round like this and you're yeah. supposed to present for them your solution mm -hmm. and i remember looking on the floor and i could see you know like presentations from you know other guys who had come in uh -huh. and i could see oracle yeah and i could see microsoft yeah and I could, oh my god yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm yeah. coming you know like the zatka voice what do you call it like a imposter syndrome yeah. kicks in. Uh -huh. you start feeling like i shouldn't be here you mm. know i'm not worth it yeah uh, and i saw those people and i was like hey here we're playing with the big boys mm. We presented, and just because we had that app, mm. you know that app, we were saying yes. more managers. Yeah. Uh, the factory managers were happy. Ah. They're like, no, the other people didn't show us how we can put these things on our phones and mm. we can be able to monitor and manage whatever. Yeah. This is good. Mm -hmm. And we were like, hey, yeah. yeah. So you mean there's something, you know? Yeah. And then we left. Uh -huh. We left, and then the tender again flopped. Mm -hmm. So it was like <laughs> after all that. Yeah. Uh, the tender never went through, it was cancelled. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh no, are we going to rebid again for yeah. a third time? Uh -huh. Like, okay, let's hold on. Yeah. We, we, we can't do this business. Yeah. Now, I mean, I'm 21 key in debt. Yeah. Uh, and I remember my partner, my, part, my partner was a gamer called yeah. Martin. Uh -huh. He had done a challenge for gamers. Uh -huh. uh, the gamers yeah, yeah, yeah. were gamers. Yeah? Uh -huh. So he won a tablet, uh -huh. a Galaxy tab. Yeah. 
we sold it for 40,000. Uh -huh. Ukutu town, black yeah, market. Yeah. For the 40, 40K, I took 20K, the 21K paid my dad, dad yeah. <laughs> his money. Yeah. And then the other one, I told Martin, let's yeah. find an office. Yeah. <laughs> ah, so you decided to risk it all. I was like, oh, no, yeah. no, Martin, let's be a bit professional. Yeah. Let's, let's see what can come out of uh -huh. it. Fun fact, the office I got, the first office I got was in Ngara. Uh -huh. This is just probably now a, a, year, or a year and a half after, yeah. after uni. Mm -hmm. That time my dad is, what is this guy doing yeah. running around? You should get a job. Uh -huh. Ngara next to Transit Hotel mm -hmm. is an old building. Yeah. Um, but actually, actually, my wife helped me get that space, uh -huh. by the way. So I went in, the space was 20k rent. Uh -huh. I think I had 19k and some change. Yeah. Uh, and I told this guy, me, there's no way I can pay you two months deposit. Yeah. Very nice guy. Uh -huh. He was an accountant, uh -huh. the landlord. Yeah. Um, told him, hey, just take this money yeah. and then give me two months and mm. figure out how I can pay you. Mm -hmm. uh, now rent going forward. Just yeah. give, me a, give, me, give me a break for like two months to figure uh -huh. it out. No furniture, no nothing. So yeah. he gave us those, you know, those plastic seats. Yeah, As yeah. you sit in an event, he gave yeah. me those seats. Uh -huh. And he gave me one desk. Uh -huh. That's where Terra started. Interesting. Um, and how did now Terra, what's it called? What was the business model that you started with? And development. How, uh -huh. We were a tech house. We used to develop things for people, websites, uh -huh. uh, systems. You need an ERP here. You uh -huh. need a point of sale here. Uh -huh. You need anything. Build me a system that can do. Oh, so that's what you wanted to do? Yes, that's, what we, that's how Terra started. Like we were doing systems, bespoke systems for people. Um, someone runs a hardware, you need mm -hmm. a system to mm -hmm. sell. Mm -hmm. Someone, you need a website, mm -hmm. you need an online store, you need oh. whatnot. Mm -hmm. That's how Terra started. I think I just mentioned, so you are the business uh, yeah. front yeah. and then your partners were the developers. They were the developers. So they're, yeah. they're the ones coding, me I go look for business. And how did you manage now to scale the business? Because you told me prior to COVID, you guys had scaled up to over 60 yeah. employees. How, yeah. how did that come to be? It came to be because um, we, over the years, you know, Terra, Terra grew, we moved from Ngara, mm -hmm. uh, we got a couple of customers coming in, mm -hmm. we, we started becoming very good at tap and pay, so mm -hmm. we got a lot of customers who mm -hmm. wanted that solution. Mm -hmm. So we moved from there, we moved to Parklands, mm -hmm. um, the team grew a bit, mm -hmm. and then while we were doing that tap and pay, we realized, hey, there's actually, that's a time payments were very hot. Everyone mm -hmm. wanted a payment processor. There weren't mm -hmm. very many. Mm -hmm. In fact, the CBK was not even licensing people mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. um, and we said, oh, let's, let's try you know, mm -hmm. this, this, this payment thing. And we mm -hmm. built Swipe. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the time we built Swipe. Yeah. And you know, Swipe was a payment processor, mm -hmm. whatever. We connected payments. Remember, we had done payments for such a, yeah. such a while. Uh -huh. So we were able to switch Visa and MasterCard transactions. Uh -huh. We were able to do a PESA for people and businesses. Mm -hmm. So that really grew and we got a lot of SMEs and businesses, um, oh. you know, to use to use the platform mm -hmm. and, and business became good. Mm -hmm. uh, now, now, now I no longer no. have one recommendation, I have yeah. like 10. Uh, um, you start telling people like, I did this for someone and people yeah. will actually, you know, relate. Interesting. And, and by the way, we've grown on word of mouth. Yeah. Terra has never advertised. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we didn't yeah. even have a social media. Yeah. Uh, we believed from very early on, if mm -hmm. you get one customer, serve them very well. Mm -hmm. Um, and that they'll lead you to the next and the next and the next. Interesting. So we grew organically. And then growing and having make, made all these strides, COVID happens. COVID happens. Ah, oh, man. At the height of COVID, mm -hmm. we were doing very well. Mm -hmm. um, we, we had just um, started scaling the program with Food for Education. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had customers, man. Um, mm -hmm. I had Tamarind Hotel, mm -hmm. um, one of my big anchor clients. Mm -hmm. We were doing a lot of um, solutioning for. Mm -hmm. Um, at that time, even for me as Collins, I'd, mm. I'd, I'd probably started doing um, Uber business. I had a fleet of 20 plus vehicles. The, the business was doing quite well. Yeah, it was doing well. Uh -huh. I mean, Uber was, because you know, I'm thinking, oh, remember, remember I learned a lot from my dad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, you know, when things are good, invest, invest, invest. Mm. <laughs> so I went into transport yeah. as Collins and, you know, I had a fleet of cars mm. and, you know, bringing good revenue. Mm -hmm. Terra was doing very well. Mm -hmm. uh, we were starting to build a team. Mm. Um, and then COVID happened. Mm -hmm. um, no flights are going, it means you have no, you're not processing any payments, payments for airlines. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, the hotels are not receiving any guests, mm -hmm. you're not working, Ubers mm -hmm. are not moving, mm -hmm. so all the cars are grounded. Yeah. Uh, it was the darkest like period of my life. Mm -hmm. um, so ground zero again. Ground zero, because uh -huh. I remember we weathered it for a while. In fact, us guys didn't even fire like employees, mm -hmm. you know, the way people are yeah, cutting yeah. people off. Uh -huh. I retained people for like six months mm -hmm. until I realized this thing is going to last yeah. longer than we uh -huh. thought. And you know, at that time, you know, people start dropping off. You know, yeah. employees can yeah, sleep, yeah. you know, mm. things are not going so yeah. well. Um, people dropped off and mm. we were left about probably three people, mm. three, four in the organization. Mm -hmm. And now we felt like we've gone back to 2011. Yeah, from scratch again. 
Yeah, because we, we closed the office, mm -hmm. uh, put everything in a container, stored yeah. it, uh -huh. went home. Ah. And how now did you rebuild after that? It was hard because yeah. what I realized very early on is that you no longer have the team of developers that you had. Mm -hmm. Remember, you, you have yeah. a team telling, add a new feature and they yeah. do it. It was up to me and Martin, so mm -hmm. I went back into programming. Wow, after many years? Of after many years. Yeah. I went and learned and learned. You know, you had a lot of time at home, so uh -huh. I was in a room uh -huh. studying how to build APIs, do yeah. all these things. And I tell my partner, you build this piece, I build this piece. Mm -hmm. uh, try this and try that, uh -huh. you know. Um, and it was very bad because I remember even my personal like finances, you'd, mm -hmm. you'd see yourself bleeding mm -hmm. over time because no money is coming in. You're mm -hmm. just spending, spending, mm -hmm. spending, spending. Um, yeah, and, and, and I give it to, by the way to my wife. That's mm -hmm. the time like she came in. Mm -hmm. and, that's you know, when you married the real yeah, one. That's how I was like, I married the real one. Yeah. Because she didn't run away when shit, you know, uh -huh. like, like, they, yeah. like when stuff hit the fan. Uh -huh. um, you know, she came and she was like, don't worry, we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, let, let me figure out the house stuff. Mm -hmm. You figure out this. Mm -hmm. I was like, hmm, I think, I think I have a really good girlfriend here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one of the interesting things and in how I came to know about Terra is around the food for education yeah. and what exactly it is that you're doing towards, what's it called, helping uh, primary, what's it called, feeding yeah. primary school children. Yeah. How did the idea come about and how do you go about it? So the idea came about 2019, mm -hmm. end of 2018, before COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and that's time I got a call from Wawera. Um, must be aware of someone mm -hmm. else, yeah, saying, hey, Collins, uh, this is an interesting program here mm -hmm. by a lady called Wawira Njiru. Mm -hmm. I was like, I've never heard of Wawira. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's an opportunity to feed a million kids. I've, mm -hmm. I've never forgotten that. Mm -hmm. There's an opportunity to feed a million kids. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, is, is feeding kids even mm -hmm. a problem? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I didn't know. You know yeah. Ignorance now. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm willing to listen. I was in a burial in Meru. Yeah. I remember saying, okay, let me come back. Mm -hmm. And then on Tuesday, we can sit and meet. Uh -huh. So I remember the first meeting, um, mm -hmm. Wawira came in to the office. Um, it's like Colin Samawira, founder of Food for Education. Mm -hmm. We now have shy of 100 kids. The program mm -hmm. was so small. Oh, People learned. 2019? Ah, yeah. it was so small. Yeah. 2018, 2019, she yeah. just started. So uh -huh. um, Mabati yeah. structure, um, she started with 35 kids. Yeah. And I was like, yo, Collins, you need to come and see what we're doing. And I went to Roiro. Mm -hmm. That was like ground zero mm -hmm. for Food for Education. And I saw the whole thing, she, and then I remember telling her, there's something we, we did mm. around tap to pay mm -hmm. Before Chase Bank collapsed, mm. Chase Bank was my customer. Yeah. Um, before they collapsed, we had tried the cashless festival with mm -hmm. Chase Bank. Yeah. And, I, and I remember the piece of technology was working really well. Mm -hmm. And I said, there's something we did for Chase. Mm -hmm. And you know, it give people a smart band and mm -hmm. you can load up the account and they can yeah. tap and pay. Let's try it for kids. Mm -hmm. I'm not giving you any guarantees it will work. Yeah. The software has been lying idle for a couple of years, so mm -hmm. let's just dust it off and try it. Mm -hmm. And Wawira was like, yeah, Collins, let's yeah. try it. I have uh -huh. nothing, so let's try it. Uh -huh. So I went and saw the program, you know, people, kids were carrying cash to school. Mm -hmm. um, and there was fraud, because, mm -hmm. you know, a kid would put 50 balls in the pocket, yeah, slips into yeah. <laughs> Arakuja Araiba. Yeah. And then, you know, when they'd pay, it was clumsy because mm -hmm. the guy serving has to give you yeah. change, yeah. coins fall in the soup. Uh -huh. Um, so I came and you know just like we tried, we tried yeah. it for two months. It yeah. worked. Ah, like Collins, can we scale this to like two hundred people? Yes. Yeah. So I said, okay. We realized cards don't work. Wristbands mm -hmm. work very well with kids. Uh -huh. So we fabricated some nice wristbands because I had yeah. contacts in China. Yeah. Uh, let's make nice wristbands for mm -hmm. kids that you know can, they can't lose. It looks classy, it yeah. looks fancy, and we brought in the first batch. Uh -huh. And uh, we give it to the kids, the kids mm -hmm. loved it. They mm -hmm. started calling it a watch. Mm -hmm. So kids started. It's a personal thing. They don't mm -hmm. want to lose it. Mm -hmm. um, it worked and we scaled from, you know, 100 kids mm -hmm. to 500 mm -hmm. to 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, yeah. 250,000 yeah. kids. Wow. And now, probably by the end of the year, or by the end of next year, we'll be close to a million kids. Uh, with it, yeah. So it's having a million kids. Uh, yeah, and I remember even telling where we're at home, yeah. when we started, yeah. I didn't think this thing was going to be used by kids. Uh -huh. Remember? Yeah, yeah, because it's starting it for the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> it started from the toilet. I was toilets. like, this was a toilet thing, you yeah. know, then it went to events. I tried yeah. events with, you know, homeboys. Uh -huh. And then we try these other things and then, oh, feeding. Uh -huh. uh, I was like, yeah, that, that's a journey of business, man. Uh -huh. um, like, Just transitions yeah, so much. It transitioned so much, it yeah. morphed so mm -hmm. much uh -huh. um, to what Terra is now. Mm -hmm. um, because right now what we realize, again, with the success of Food for Education, yeah. um, a lot of people started calling us now. Uh -huh. uh, and now business, we, we started coming out of that COVID, um, you know, nightmare where, you know, there was no customers, mm -hmm. no what. And we realized, uh, from the onset, there's yeah. one thing we've been really good at: mm -hmm. tap and pay. 
Ah, so that's from the onset. Yeah, yeah. We just you just don't see it. You know, like entrepreneurs, you get so lost. Mm. And I always say it's a tragedy of us guys when we are very young mm -hmm. and you're very young entrepreneurs, you're hot. Yeah. You want to try everything. You hear Bitcoin, mm -hmm. you want to try Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, you try something else, you want to try it. Yeah. Um, so over the years, we took a step back and, mm -hmm. you know, like took stock uh -huh. and realized that's the one thing we've been doing all of our lives. That's very interesting. Yeah. So maybe before you wind up, because time has literally moved yeah. so much, I'm yeah. wondering, I'm like, wow, it's already 45 minutes. Okay. I have 10 questions, very fast, quick fire questions, whatever comes to your mind. Number one, what's your greatest risk you've ever taken? Going into that first office with no money. Yeah. What's your favorite month? November. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what were you most afraid of as a child? Heights. <laughs> <laughs> what has been your favorite? Who didn't matter, yeah. And the final question if you were to transform to an animal, which one would you choose? Hey, bro, an ego. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, it's quite an interesting conversation there with Collins, the co founder of Terra, and provided they're doing very big things in the in the tap to pay industry and in the digital world. So, so it's wallet as a service. So thanks so much for the conversation. You, you can check them out on social media. As all news are coming to you from the Capital Club, the place you need to be as an entrepreneur. And one of the core things that I try to share the light on is the amenities within the Capital Club, the meeting rooms where we are shoot filming this. Um, there's a, what's it called? There's the gym, there's a spa. There's so much to actually just gather from this particular experience of being a member here. My name is Ian Dennis. This has been the Late Night Business. Until next time, see you right here on KTN.